module one is introducing the Photoshop document and workspace to the Photoshop user. I really, really think this is an important piece that needs to be covered right at the beginning. All right, we need to learn how that how we can efficiently navigate through our document windows using some of the panels, but most importantly, using keyboard shortcuts to help us, you know, zoom in, zoom out, and navigate through that window. Now, before we even start doing too much about that with our own images, we need to set up our preferences. And the preferences is just a way of getting Photoshop to. I guess for lack of better words, behave the way we want it to behave. In other words, do you want these dialog boxes always popping up when you do A, B, or C? Do you want to have this go on or that go on? So uh, there's a few things that have me a little bit irked with the way the new things that come out in Photoshop and all that stuff. It's just me. All right, it has nothing to do with you or anybody else. So I'm going to show you how I set up my preferences and then you can actually, you know, either take it or throw it out and, and just move on. The other thing is, lesson three, is Photoshop, Photoshop's color settings. There's a couple of things that need to be addressed there right from the beginning. Ever wonder why your images look great on your computer screen? or they look great on your camera, you bring them into Photoshop and they don't look as good, or you manipulate them to an extent that you're really happy with them in Photoshop and then you upload them or send them to friends and they go, ugh, that looks like crap. The reason is your preferences and your Photoshop color settings. So I'm gonna walk you through and explain to you as a photographer how you should have it set up. If you're a web developer, then you should have it set up another way. And if you're a graphic designer, you'll have to uh, set it up just a little bit differently than the other guys. Great, now the next lecture is we're just gonna start right at the beginning, right, right at the beginning, and we're gonna create a new document. I know it sounds simple, but there's just a few things that need to be explained, and I do that. Also, I show you how to create your own custom document sizes so that if you're consistently using uh, your inkjet printer and you're you're printing to uh, 11 by 17s or 13 by 19s or or 17 by 22s or whatever you, you you're always printing to rather than creating a new document and then having to modify those things why not just have it as an option added to what Adobe already gives you. The next thing that we need to talk about is arranging the panels and the groups. The panels and groups are those things that go all the way down the right hand side of the Photoshop interface. Some of the panels you'll never use, some of them you'll use just a little bit of time, and then other, other panels you're going to use all the time. Well, why not you know, get rid of the ones you don't want and only keep the ones you do want? So once you've done that, then we move on to the next lecture, and I show you actually how to create a custom workspace. And you can create multiple custom workspaces based on what it is that you're doing at the time to make your uh, workflow a little more efficient. So then the lecture seven, we identify, I show you how to actually identify a pixel's color value. And as well, uh, I explain how the eyedropper tool works and how you can actually select colors within your document, set them as your foreground color, set them as your background color for whatever things that you're kind of going through. And then lastly, we just touch on file size and resolution. And this thing can be one of the hardest things to grasp when you're first working with digital files. Uh, the only thing I can say is follow along. I try to explain it as best as I can. You have an accompanying PDF for every one of these lectures. You've got an accompanying PDF and I even supply you with the, the file that you see of the train station on the left hand side of uh, the screen here. So you'll have your PDF yeah, for each module. You'll have the image file that we use here of the Via Rail Canada train station. So let's get started with the learning process.